Hello everybody, Peter of England bringing you the third video in this uh, series concerning the trap. Um, today I want to do a brief recap on the previous three videos that I've put together. That's part one, part two, 2A, and this is therefore really the fourth, but the third in the, in the, in the series. Um, before I do that, I would just like to let people remember that we covered various topics in the previous, the previous three videos. Um, and today, uh, what I want to talk about is uh, solutions. So I said at the beginning of this uh, series of presentations that we would work, work uh, historically from around about the 18th century. So we started around 1760 in the United States. We explained a little bit about the background scenarios in Europe and how the banking families decided that there was a very prime and uh, plump piece of real estate called the United States or the colonies at the time that they wanted to take control of. And so the movement was solely for one thing, to capture that and then to enthrone it into the crown of the the corporate banking establishment that was totally in control of the European monarchy and the European so-called sovereign nations. So don't forget, it's the people behind the scenes that control the money, and therefore if they control the money, they can control what happens with that money. If they turn the tap on or reduce the, the flow of money, they cause problems. And if they increase the flow, then they cause inflationary uh, situations, very much like happening today in the world. But it's always done for a reason. Yeah, it's called rowing, and it helps them to control the economies to their best ends so they can foreclose and um, take real assets and real property for the promissory notes that they have offered you to work for in the place of lawful money like gold and silver or anything of, of um, uh, enduring worth. So if we are looking to create solutions, we've got to first to look at the problem. And the problem really resembles something that is enthroned in society and is enthroned into the, the psyche of the human mind uh, for almost time immemorial. And that is the concept of death. Yeah? So this is really what I want to cover today to try and give you a message here. The message is in preparation for, let's say, an Easter rising. Now, Easter Sunday this year, uh, for everyone probably apart from the Russian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox churches um, uh, on the Christian calendar anyway, is on Sunday the 9th of April. So Easter Sunday is celebrated as a day of resurrection. And it was the resurrection of Jesus or Yeshua, Yeshua Melchizedek, uh, also known as the Nazarene, uh, part of the Essene Brotherhood. And there was a very distinct message that was delivered there. Um, and what we're going to do is cover that and go back in time, because whether you believe in the, the, the biblical rendition of the Jesus character, or whether you believe in the Old Testament was written completely differently than the New Testament, whether you think it's a, a complete load of nonsense, what well, you've got to begin to admit and recognize that there is creation, there is life in activity, and if you didn't create it, it must have created you. Therefore, for now, just journey with me and let's uh, use the, the synonym of substituting the word God for the word life. So if in every context they fit together and explain the same scenario, then we can easily substitute one for the other, and what we're doing now is calling uh, calling the people out who might be agnostic or atheistic and saying, do you believe in life? And they must say yes, because they, they seemingly think they're alive here now in, in this kingdom on, on this planet. So where we're going with this is there is a functionality here in existence operating behind the scenes, which is a death cult. Um, this is quite evidenced by the view 
or perpetrated the, the view that the Catholic Church, for example, believes in the doctrine of, of death and only being able to be saved by being associated with the, um, the, the, the Roman Catholic Church. Um, but more so than that, we find that there is a history of the, the perpetration of the belief in a hell realm, whether that's in the Buddhist um, philosophy or whether that is in a, a standard Judo-Christian philosophy. There is this idea that there is a realm where the, the hungry ghosts or the death or the dead walk upon the earth and they need saving or they go to purgatory. So in effect, this, this, this nonsense children's fairy tale has been perpetrated onto the, uh, the psyche of the human, uh, the human race for, for millennia. Now, you have the judges who dress in black, you have the Catholic priests that dress in black, you have the Greek Orthodox and the Roman priests that dress in black, and black has always been typically associated with the lack of light or death. Um, and so what we are going to do is begin some preparations now in 2023, as early as it is, leading up to a change of mind for those people who are watching this video or who will watch this video over the weeks to come, who have decided that they've had enough of the system that they're in. Now, you cannot change the world necessarily because you don't have control over the other near 8 billion other souls or minds out there, but you can change your mind. And that is the easiest thing to do. And what I want to try and show you is that you need to begin to look at a 180 degree turn in direction of the way you think. Some of these constructs are based in time. Now, I touched on a previous video when I spoke about time, uh, past, um, future, time, the moment of now. So the moment of now is the closest to eternity that you will ever find in the realms of time and space. And so what I'm trying to touch on here is it could just be that the controlling interests, the controlling elite, understand some type of universal laws or some universal realities that though they don't necessarily follow them, they actually believe and understand it in a very uh, real way. And one of those ways is that biblically, and in uh, tales like the Epic of Gilgamesh and other historical theological documents, they speak about um, the fall of man. Some, um, the Judeo-Christian or more of the Christian uh, doctrine is that Adam and Eve fell from grace in the Garden of Eden. Um, Adam fell asleep and nowhere does it say that he ever woke up. Um, and also we have, uh, should we say, more salient um, uh, interpretations that man's consciousness has fallen and it is up to um, exemplars like the Buddha, Buddha Shakyamuni, Buddha Gautama, the various saints, uh, the ascended masters, to come along and elevate man's consciousness. So the time aspect could be and this is the thing as part of this solution, which is a bit of a slow build up. But as I say, I'm trying to present this so that we've got a, a, a worldwide Easter event for a scenario of resurrection. So what does the resurrection mean? It was one of the greatest things that the great exemplar Jesus came down to try and show. And that was that you are not a body, that you are a spirit or a soul living in an encasement and that life is e eternal or ongoing. And he proved that two ways. He proved that by the fact that the crucifixion was a non-event and the fact that he resurrected or came back from the dead three days after he was supposedly killed. Now, why is this important? Why is it becoming a historical importance coming up to Easter 23, which I just gratuitously decided we can maybe make something of this because there are people out there that understand that the world is in a very difficult situation. The world um, is nothing more than ideas. It's a collection of ideas, but are, they are tired, they're torn out, they're worn out. Um, and so everyone can see that some, something's got to give, something's got to break. Now, 
Whether that happens next week, whether it happens in five years or ten years or doesn't happen in our lifetimes, then it's something though that we have a power to do something about here and now. And that is the only moment in creative time that you have is this now moment. So the message really comes through that the the people who are controlling the the planetary religions typically let's just use the Vatican and the papacy as an example where they have basically over time controlled the judiciary, the executive, the legislative branches of government and the monarchies and they've instilled into uh, the mindset that you are uh, um, as evidenced by the, the block capital letters on your birth certificate, um, on various government documents that are issued to you. Uh, and that is the fact that all capitals are used on these documents because historically from what's called a Justinian, uh, Justinian deception, then uh, anything that is written in uppercase, large capitals, no men type um, literature signifies that someone is not alive or they are dead. So the concept of this came about from, from many, many years ago, and the death cults are still very much in, in, in operation. So there is an assumption when you go into a court or a tribunal or go in front of uh, anything that has an authority over you, that you are dead. Yeah? You are dead and at the best uh, of unsound mind. This actually comes out of the belief of what's called the doctrine of discovery, um, sort of enunciated in the United States in the 1850s, uh, when following this, uh, this papal bull called Intera Cetera, I think from 1453, the idea was that the Portuguese and the Spanish had been told to go off and conquer the Americas and the South America and, and basically bring into the faith the heathen populations. But the problem was, even when treaties were made with, with them, they weren't followed or accepted. They were totally ignored on the basis that anything that was not born of the faith and been, had been baptized was basically a ward of court or something that was non, non-living. Yeah? It, they had no responsibilities towards it. So this is the, the doctrine that's pushed through into now the 21st century and ongoing. And this is why virtually no one can get a redress in the court of law, whether it's through a magistrate, through a district judge, Crown Court, Supreme Court, or wherever, unless they've actually proven themselves to be alive. So this is the proof of life. And we want to look at how we, how we actually achieve that. Now, there are various methodologies, there are various teachings out there on the internet which propose that everything in the world is not debtor creditor. It runs on a commercial basis of trustee v beneficiary. Okay? So there are a series of trusts in place out there, and what has happened is over time the powers that be, the priesthood, the monarchies, the controlling interests, and the elite have formulated certain rules of trusts. So, trust rules, whereby we have an executor or grantor. We have a trustee and we have a beneficiary. And that's all there is. And then there's something in the middle there, which is quite important, and it's called the res, the trust res. The trust res really refers to property, the thing that's been placed in trust by the settler, the grantor, or the executor. And that's something we need, we need to look at here because all the presumptions that are running in the commercial world that have been put in historically 
all revolve around these rules within trusts. So, there are two ways we can proceed from here. There is one school of thought which suggests that you need to go through all of this type of literature. You need to look at books on trust law. You need to research in great depth a means of changing what's called your, your master file or the guardian's security control over the account of a minor because you are referred to or looked at as a minor or an incompetent but to the best part you might as well be dead. So for those who want to just look at the, the scenario that you're in here and the solutions that we're now going to try and deliver to you, uh, it doesn't matter where, where you are in the world, but just as an example so you can see this, because I don't know what the rules are uh, or the appropriate law in the United, sorry, in um, Australia or Canada or um, Belgium. But you need to go and look at this one. Um, you look up uh, 31 CFR, that's the Code of Federal Regulations in the United States, and you'll actually find in there what the, the definition of a minor is. Yeah, someone who, it says basically, uh, a minor is someone who has not yet attained the age of 18. A minor is also someone that has attained the age of 18, but has not as yet claimed his estate. So, that's there in black and white. That's a predominant social, commercial contract or scenario that is operating in the background here because unbeknownst to you, the elite or the elite priesthood and the cult of death understand fully that the fall of man from higher spiritual dimensions, typically let's just look for now uh, for these pe for people like out, out there who know a little bit more about uh, interdimensional um, realities, there are five harmonic universes within this collection of worlds where we are, and in each one there are three, three densities with three dimensions within each density. So for practical purposes, we've got HU5 at the top, HU1 at the bottom. That gives three dimensions within each one times five, that's 15. We in our latest, so should we say, scenarios, have fallen from harmonic universe two into harmonic universe one, which is where we, we, we exist at the moment. Now, let's now continue with the, 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 the solution. And I'll write down here, HU2, HU1, and that, in effect, was a fall or a drop in consciousness. Now, the controlling elites, though they have not necessarily any desire to get out of here, they understand the mechanics of the trap. And the trap equals ego consciousness. This is the problem that you've got when you move into the court or any tribunal, because in the court there is, in effect, this magic circle. Magic circle, the rules of which they've created, not you. So the moment you enter into their jurisdiction, that's whether you sign a hidden contract for commercial activity with the crown via signing your signature block for the bank account, which gives you the credit card, you're then acting in commas, and so you're part of the crown acting commercially. So 
I'm not going to cover all of this, but this is the depth to which we would have to go if we were using the conventional methods of working through um, trust law, the various types of trust, the various uh, aspects of trust powers, the various problems arising with proving X, Y, and Z. And the bottom line is all of this going forward and back takes a lot of time and at the end, they can quite easily come along and say, yeah, we accept your, uh, your arguments. You're totally right. We say this to you off camera. You've issued a protective order. We're speaking to you in chambers or in a closed environment. You're totally 100% right, but we're not going to do anything for you. Or go away. We want it all in polka dot writing. Uh, what's polka dot? Not black or blue or red. We want it in polka dot. So you would always be frustrated so what we've got to do is we've got to go back to source here and undo the situation. And that's what we're, that's what we're coming to now. So this court crown, Holy Roman Empire, I'm not very good at drawing eagles, but you've usually got this double double-headed eagle that's represented from what's called the Holy Roman Empire. As I say, that's not going to win any awards for accuracy, but wherever you see that depiction of the double-headed eagle, or you also see, I think it's like on the Mazda or Mazda Ahura, you've got the, the circle with the, the twin-sided wings. Yeah, you've got this depiction here of the Holy Roman Empire and who controls it. And it's an, these are quite ancient Anunnaki symbols. So uh, refer to the, I think the Old Testament, the, 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 the battles with the, the Nephilim or David and Goliath, Goliath being maybe one of the uh, Anunnaki. So what we've got here, um, is, is, is the basis of the problem, of the trap. You are operating in a realm that they, the people who are supposedly controlling this realm, believe is in their domain because you don't actually understand the nature, not so much of reality of looking around, but of the spiritual reality of escape. So if you're in a trap, you need to escape. And so this is what we're trying to show you because this is the lesson that Jesus came down to teach. And that lesson really was, as I said before, there was the cruci crucifixion and then there was the this was the resurrection. So what I would like to suggest to people is that we begin to commence now with looking at a way of getting ourselves out of the scenario that, that we're in. And so, as it says at the top here, today's video is going to lead to a webinar. Um, and the reason for that is that I can't possibly explain this on a, a public channel for two main reasons. One, it would probably take a little bit too long and it's a bit too intricate. And secondly, it wouldn't be a good idea to put this information out piecemeal because if it's not taken um, in context um, and there is not a, um, a guide leading you through it, then it could possibly become more confusing at the end than it was in the beginning. So there's a duty of responsibility here to make sure that it gets presented properly. So really, I'm going to carry on doing the videos, but we need to discuss this type of material in the background because what this is going to do is give you some ammunition so that you can now, and this is, uh, I'm going to write some more here in a moment. This is what you're going to do. You're going to have a divorce. You 
I'm going to show you how to divorce from the abusive um, partner or husband or female partner that you're in the relationship with as represented by the democratic so-called lying criminal governments and the politicians within them that have trapped you partially into, well, not partially, but into one of the biggest con jobs ever. And that biggest con job is, is a double whammy for you. One, when you ever go to vote, as I've explained in one of my previous videos five, six years ago now, never put an X on a ballot paper. The X on the ballot paper confirms that you are illiterate, incompetent, and incapable of managing your own affairs. So that's the first thing they've got you on. You're actually declaring to the ward of the, in the United Kingdom, it's called a ward where the politician uh, um, uh, is responsible for the voters in that ward. And ward means a ward of court or a ward in a hospital where you're looked after because you're incapacitated. So not only do we have the ward con, but what we've got after that is the secret ballot. So if you control the returning officer and nobody is allowed to look at the boxes that have had their votes cast, then it's the easiest thing in the world to figure, configure, alter the so-called democratic process as they see fit. And so it isn't something that was just done between uh, Donald Trump and the Biden administration recently. It was done with London Johnson against um, Coke Stevenson in 1948 senatorial election in Texas. It's been done for time immemorial. Yeah. Do you think these politicians just accidentally come into power? Um, for example, people like um, Macron and Justin Trudeau and uh, Jacinda Ahern in uh, New Zealand? Of course not. These people are all selected by the World Economic Forum. They're on the Young Global Leaders Initiative program, and they basically get couched, get coached, get told how to behave and react. Then they get put in the, into the party and then mysteriously they come into uh, president, presidential posts. So that's the nature of the trickery. The reason for the divorce is because of the slavery, the bondage, the abusive and violent barratory and personage, uh, look those words up if you don't quite know what they mean, um, that you've been subject to. So you've had enough, and as far as a divorce procedure is concerned, it can be unilateral if you can make your case. So you don't have to wait for the other side to sign the papers. This is what we're going to do. We're going to show you how to prepare a very simple one or two documents to initiate the following divorce. So the divorce procedure, I think I better go on to the the next side. So, there is a social contract running in the background. The social contract is between the governed and the governors. So, this social contract is a contract of utmost good faith. And in return for taxes, you allow them to protect you and govern you and give you the best of which the production energy that comes from you um, is delivering. So if that social contract is being violated, and I assure you that it is, then we get into a situation where through the process of time, you should 
change things. So, for example, ask yourself this question. Laws that were put down in 1913 uh, for the Federal Reserve, or 19, yeah, 1913, Federal Reserve Act. In 1944, for Bretton Woods. Why are you still, 79 years later, allowing these outdated, um, fossilized ideas to perpetrate when you can see quite easily that laws are changeable just like that? These time-based uh, ideas are running and controlling your life. And so these are the things that we need, we need to alter and we need to, to look at. So what we're going to do is, with this divorce, we're going to provide you with these methods of unhooking yourself from the trap. Okay? So, what we're going to do, we're going to show you one, and this is the most important, how to change your mind. Number two, how to change your name. Three, how to change your, and this is the one that many people would think is impossible, but I'm going to show you an absolutely reliable, historically esoteric, perfectly correct way to change your date of birth from the esoteric calendrical perspective and point of view. And with that, these three, these are initial three parts of the Buddhist philosophy when bodhisattvas embrace the, the, the rules, or should we say the, the conduct required to go onto the, the path for enlightenment. Yeah? Change your mind, change your name, change your appearance. So in effect, what we're doing there is looking to show you how to do that. Now, the most important one after that is going to be, and this is why I want to try and coincide it with a movement, whether that's just in the United States or whether it's in the UK or whether it's somewhere else that this breaks um, more favorably. We want to show you how to how to resurrect yourself from the dead, okay? And why that's important is because you are operating in the land of the dead. In order to do this, we need to follow a Christic or Krishna example. And what Christ did, or Jesus, when he came down to fulfill the mission, which was to show that no matter what you did to him or to the body, then it wouldn't alter anything at all. So basically, he was betrayed, uh, he was abandoned in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was scourged, he was falsely accused by Pilate and the Sanhedrin, and then he was eventually uh, put on a cross and, and died, okay? But he proved that that was nothing. Now, he had to do that because it was a teaching example. He came down to fulfill a teaching example. And if you're going to use the body as a communication uh, 
uh, device, which it was, then obviously what he wanted to do is have the most extreme examples to deliver to people that uh, it didn't really matter what they tried to do to you. If you had the mind or you had the connectivity to source, then all of it meant nothing. Nobody has to do that again, obviously, but what it came down to is actually showing what the the res property of this trust that we're going to show you how to create is the most important. And the res of the trust is the mind that created the estate. So the estate is going in there, but the question is, what is the estate? And the estate is the example that was given that a son of God or a creation of God can do everything that Jesus did and more. So as we are leading to that point, then what we've got to do is to try and create this, this change of direction for you or get you to change the the direction for yourself. So once these aspects have been followed through, then what we've got now is a divine intervention to get you out of the trap. And as the entire operational system that confronts you from the terms and the agreement contracts for a contract with Amazon or for your phone company or for legal representation or for you to get a job or no matter where it is or what it is, it's intensely complicated and deliberately made that way because it's all based on fractious uh, unstable ego mindset which is based on lies and distortion and not a real picture so anything that is truthful anything that is joyful anything that is honest is quite simple to understand and we all know that but what's happening is a collectivity of lies is being wrapped around us and so with this solution solutionary aspect what we're going to then show is how to collapse the trust. So, how to collapse the prime trusts we're going to collapse which will collapse automatically as a result of what we've done by divorcing divorcing ourselves from the system on the basis of everything that I mentioned before, that you, you're involved in a, 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 an abusive, uh, slave-based financial slavery, violent, coercive, intimidating arrangement with the people that have entrusted, you've entrusted them to look after you, They've betrayed that, and so these probably would be described as like an evil shepherd. They need to be changed, they need to be taken out of the way, and the, the system needs to be changed. So it's not the entire system that needs to be changed, but if we don't start by doing it individually with people like you, then we can't do it at all. So really, in this atheistic, agnostic, self-indulgent, do dollar-created world, where only the material is of any value, we've got to start looking at different ways to go ahead. Einstein said it, many people say it, and on a quantum basis it makes sound sense that we have to start moving forward in a different way than the way that we're in now. Because if this is true, and I assure you that it is, then God or Creator or infinite intelligence is working with you. And I'd like to suggest 
that you being a finite creature in your mind, if the finite attempts the impossible, the infinite can join with it to make it possible. So you've got to start thinking of who you are. The ego would, the ego would convince you that you are a frail, vulnerable, pathetic creature that has a body around it which will age and die and therefore subject to sickness. And if sickness is nothing more than just uh, a slow death, could you actually be said to be alive? And that's the trick. It's taken me all this time to sort of get to that point here now, but this is the trick. The elitist governing priesthood realize and understand that as long as you're subject to the belief in death, belief in aging, sickness, frailty, depression, and all the other psychosymptomatic aspects of the trap, then you're in the realm of the dead. And therefore, though they are subject to the same things, they're just a little bit more aware of it perhaps than you. And so that's why on this doctrine of discovery, they have decided, well, we discovered it, therefore we're in charge. And so for all those people that wander into a court, all those people that present the papers, uh, basically claiming that they're sovereign beings or they're part of the John family, John of the family Doe, and they, they try to go through UCC filing statements, you see what UCC 1 and 3 and all the rest, or fill in the 1099A for the uh, abandonment or acquisition of secured property. Yes, 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 but it can't be that complicated because the creator must have given you an easier out. And it could be, as the Buddhists and the Hindus say and the yogis and the sadhus, that the difference between getting trapped in here forever and getting out is the difference between 49 and 51 percent. It's so subtle. But unless a way shower comes along, and I would like to offer my services in that respect now, just to be able to say, you've got to change. And if, we, if all our minds are connected, which they seemingly certainly are, um, then what comes through one mind goes to another. And if we put our minds together, the lamp gets lit. So it's like a lamp lighter philosophy. I put my mind towards yours um, and we can transmit even like that. Even to the extent of putting your finger on the screen is enough from a quantum perspective to have the energy and the knowledge jump. So we've got to start thinking more creatively, more beautifully and more empoweredly than we currently do because the alternative picture out there is a descent into the metaverse and a virtual reality hell realm that takes you even further down from Harmonic Universe 1, Dimension 3, into the, the true hell realms, where your souls, in effect, will be cut from the, from the matrix. So, how to collapse the trust is what we're going to show in the webinar. Um, and the collapsing of the trust is going to be collapsing what's called the C-O-L-B, the B, C, and the... That stands for Certificate of Live Birth. That's the birth record that when you are born alive in the hospital goes through to the uh, depository where a bond is created for it. Then the next thing is when the mother, as the informant, voluntarily then goes to the registrar to register the birth, there is another bond created. And the final one is at the age of 16 or 18 when you claim a number, a tax-related number, so that you can work within the system. That's the social security number, or in the UK, that's called a uh, national insurance number. When you get that, in effect, you're locked in and blocked in and have taken, uh, they've taken now control of the entire apparatus. So what you've got to be able to do is to collapse these and how we collapse them 
is we do something called merging of the titles. So it's difficult to write like this solo. Merging the titles and zeroing the account and that's on the accounts payable against the what's called accounts received we make that fairly simple and we put that together and so this truly is the the workings of the matrix that they've wrapped around you and prevented you for many many centuries uh, from understanding or escaping in the middle middle century so the middle ages it wasn't really of any importance because people came people went uh, it was uh, it, it wasn't a technologically uh, it wasn't required for them to understand anything and we were supposedly evolving to the the situation now where look at it the Vatican Church through its policies on um, contraception have in great part ensured that we have around about 8 billion people on the planet right now. Populations are increasing um, quite dramatically, even though we had a, a, massive, uh, a massive pandemic. And you've got to ask yourself why or how could that be? But from the best part, the job's done. There is one, one caveat here. The main caveat here is that there is a cleavage. There is a definite schism. There is a break between the people who've um, had you know what and the people who haven't. There would probably, I would suggest, be a strong correlation uh, between being able to accept this information and rejecting it wholesale uh, because the the V as in has got quite intense um, spiritual consequences, mainly for the soul and for the the mindset of the acceptance behind. Um, that being said. If there are people out there that do want to have that um, repaired or altered, I, amongst others, can show you how, and it doesn't require detoxing, it doesn't require um, some plant-based food or some, some product that you have to buy or consume or prepare or incant. Um, it's something simple to do with the power of the mind and the reality of that matter brought to matter can have no effect. That has to be the case. Otherwise, everything that you see outside of you, the matter, would be at cause and you would be an effect. And that obviously cannot be because Every single thing you see outside you, without exception anywhere, is the past. And as the Buddhists show you quite clearly, that none of these phenomena have an independent existence from their own side. They are projections of the mind, and what can be projected, as you as the creator, can be undone as easily. So, with that, I hope you enjoyed it. This is quite, uh, maybe not the type of video that you were expecting. The weir bank and re-movement um, baseline that created this opportunity for me to be here now is, is part of the energy trap. Weirbank was solely there to show you the inequities and the deceptions that have been perpetrated on you. The re-movement was to say that we have to remove the politicians, the, uh, the untrustworthy ideologues, these socialist, fascist, communists that have been put in place um, promising you the world but delivering hell. 
We've got to that stage now where we're coming up to a major, major, major event. And what I would suggest is you need to get on board something. Whether it's a horse-drawn carriage, a car, I don't know. But metaphorically speaking, you need to be able to get behind some type of movement that has a spiritual connectivity to it. Otherwise, the destiny for you is going to be populating Metaverse by Zuckerberg wearing your, your virtual reality goggles and not understanding that within that virtual world, you got flicked in permanently. You will not come out because you will be then welded for a long time in a phantom ghosting reality. And that's again bringing it full scale back around why the elite believe or understand that you don't know sufficient about universal reality or universal macabre constructs of the universe and anything to do about spirituality because you've never been taught it and what's out there is looked at as trash or nonsense. The power of the mind is all there is and so with working with the mind we can overcome everything. That's the message. Um, thank you. The next video will let you know about the time and the date for the webinar. So please um, make sure you follow uh, and subscribe. Thank you.